what's up you guys i'm so excited to be sitting down and being able to film this video i hope this setup was okay i was gonna sit just like at my table there but um it was just such a plain background and i was like i have this cute little vanity I'm wearing a blazer because we're going full professional ass bitch mode in this video so if you've been following my journey as I moved to New York last month and I finished my master's degree and I've been trying to find my way in this world, you would know that I've been struggling a little bit with the whole job search thing. And I've been going back and forth for the last like couple months, even when I was in Geneva still over the summer and I was still in school, I had been looking at jobs and applying to things. And I learned very quickly that it was gonna be harder than I thought it was. I don't even know why I'm like dragging this out with a stupid intro, but I got a job. It's different than I thought it was going to be going into the job search and I had to kind of like shift my expectations, shift what I wanted, shift my idea of an ideal situation for employment. So before I tell you what it is, where I'm working and what exactly I'm doing, I'm gonna do a little bit of background. So for those who don't know me, hi, I'm Christy. Subscribe to my channel. We're gonna be doing lots of like work content. That's why I'm wearing this blazer, you guys. I'm so excited to be able to share my life with you guys and what it's like working full time in New York and balancing it with the rest of my life and doing like work weeks in my life, morning routines, all those things that I love watching. I'm so excited to have a healthy work life balance now that I'm not in school anymore because I'm excited for this phase where it's like post grad and I'm actually able to focus on that and my life and YouTube and do all of it. So like I said, a little background. I just got my master's from American University and I studied international peace and conflict resolution. So that's like international relations, political science kind of realm. And so while I was getting my master's in DC, I worked in a think tank for a while and I worked in the State Department, like I said, and that was more like policy focused like doing research. I worked on peace process support there. It was really cool because that was very closely related to what I studied. And so this summer, like fresh faced, recent grad, me going into the, you know, job searching thing, I had to face the harsh reality that it is next to impossible to find entry level jobs that are actually that kind of track. And there is no easy one track. You start here and you work your way up there and get to this in my field, it's very all over the place and you get experience doing a lot of different things. I'm gonna answer some questions along with this video. Some of the questions relate to that, so I'm gonna weave them in throughout. Why New York, when DC has more policy related jobs? And I feel like I've addressed this a lot. There is more opportunity for working in the international arena in DC. Living in New York City has always been a dream of mine since I was younger. And that was more of just like a personal goal of mine through my entire life was being able to live in New York. And when I was graduating and moving and I had to find a new place to live anyway, whether that was in DC or elsewhere, I was just like, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, this is the time to move to New York. Like if there ever is any moment that it's gonna be right, like it's gonna be now because I'm still young. I don't have roots anywhere. I have, this is the time to live out any of those like pipe dreams that you've always had. I decided to prioritize that over what might be an easier job search for me as an entry level job. I think a lot of people can't really resonate with that. Like I feel like logically you make bigger decisions based on your career rather than just like a pipe dream of a city that you've always loved. If I started to plant those roots and get a job in DC, it would be 10 times harder for me to pick up and just like move to New York for the hell of it later on in my life. Like I have my entire life to make big decisions based on my career and I have my entire life to move back to DC. And long term, like I do see myself there and I do know that what I wanna move up in will be there. But I was like, if I just wanna get basic experience working in an organization, like it would be harder to find any sort of policy work for entry level, even in DC, but especially in New York. And in New York, there's a lot more for like international relations kind of work. There's a few, there's like a couple think tanks, but mostly it's nonprofit organizations or international organizations like the UN is here. And it was always like my pipe dream, pipe dream as a child when I was like dreaming of New York to work at the United Nations. I started to expand my pool of what I was looking for in a job. Like that's another challenge of kind of moving at this point is the network that I've started to build is in DC and like connections I have there are there. I feel like I'm dragging this out too much and I wanted to like be able to build up to it but I know that you guys just want to know like where it is and what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tell you on October 1st, so very soon, I'm going to start working at UNICEF. 
If you're unfamiliar, UNICEF is the UN Children's Fund, such an amazing organization. And I've always dreamed about, you know, the UN and its agencies and all the different amazing work that they do. I'm working on the education team in their advocacy section, specifically what issues related to education that UNICEF is working on and kind of like spreading that message to the public and advocating for the education work that UNICEF does. Well, it gets you a lot of stuff with social media like I have experience in and just the issues that UNICEF works on and it'll be really really cool to see how it works on the inside. Get experience in an international organization. I don't know if I've talked about this on YouTube but at AU in my program you pick like a concentration and I chose to do international organization affairs so I took classes that were based on kind of like multilateralism, how international organizations work. I've always just been super, super fascinated by them. The connections there start to build a network here in New York and work at a nonprofit. So I know that sounds like fine and dandy and you're like, wow, that's great. That's a great organization. Well, maybe you're not here. Like I talked about earlier there, I had to make sacrifices and consider alternate options when I was looking at what I wanted to do. The catch with this one is that it's a temporary position. It's a temporary appointment of only a few months till the end of the year. So I was actually surprised by that. Like a lot of the positions at the UN, at its agencies, UNICEF, UN Women, things like that, they do a lot of like shorter term consultancies and temporary appointments. At first, I had kind of ruled those out when I was looking because I was like, no, like I want a full-time job. I want it to be long-term. I want to really like get in there. I had this like super ideal vision of what I wanted in a job. And I was like, what's the point of just doing something for a few months and then having to start over and be at square one with the job search. After like doing my research about it and thinking about it and talking to other people, she went through the same job search thing recently. And so I was talking to her about it. And she was like, yeah, at the beginning, I turned down internships and short-term things that only were like three or six months because I said the same thing. Like, what's the point? I want to get something where I'll be there long-term. But then she said, by the time those like few months rolled around, she was still looking for a job and she could have done that and gotten the experience there and made the connections there that could have led to something more. And so that really put it in perspective for me. Also, my friend Katie um, posted this on her Instagram story recently, which really like struck a chord with me in this. Don't be afraid of starting over because you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from experience. And so me three months from now in this position, it's not going to be the same square one. Like I will have so much, I'll have experience in an international organization, in a nonprofit that'll help me get a job that might be more permanent in another nonprofit when they see that I've actually had experience in it and maybe I'll make connections that will lead to something either there or something else. Just because it's short term, it could still be really beneficial to me. That is why I've decided to take it. A lot of the problems that I've been running into is places want you to have like years of experience. And when you total up my two internships, like I, it's not even a full year. And so any little bit is gonna help. So yeah, that is what I'm gonna be doing for the next three months. But yes, I am getting paid, I am, you know, working in the office full time. We you still do YouTube if you get a new job. Really excited for you. Thank you. And yes, I'm still going to be doing YouTube, of course. I honestly, like I've said, I'm so much more motivated to do YouTube when I'm doing other things. Like, I'm so excited for all the content that I'm going to make. People are asking, like, what jobs I'm applying to, what other ones that I talked to. So I guess I can talk about it now, like the other ones that I kind of alluded to, but I didn't want to say in the moment. So the first job that I applied to that I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. It was actually an internship. This was when I was back in Geneva and I saw this opportunity and I was like, this is it. I want to do this. I'm going to apply and move to New York. That was like the push for it. But it was at the World Food Program and it was to be a liaison to work on the UN development system reform. So you would get to go to like meetings at the UN and learn about the reforms they're doing for the development system and bring them back to the World Food Program and kind of like talk with them about developing their strategy. I didn't get that. <laughs> I mostly focused on nonprofits, UN agencies. I had interviews at UN Women. I applied to like the Council on Foreign Relations, which is a big think tank here in New York. I still would love to work for a think tank, honestly. I think that's one of the things that I would definitely tell people and myself in this process is let go of the idea that you know what the company needs more than that. That's why rejection hurts so much more is when you think that you're perfect for a role and you killed it in everything and you would do so great in the position. You never know what's going on on the other side, what other things unspoken that they're looking for in an applicant but some of the other applicants 
have on their resumes, like experience they have. You don't know better than the people that are interviewing you. That was tough, but I got over it. And you know, one door closes, another door opens. The process kind of reminded me of sorority recruitment in a way, and I'm saying this because I feel like it's a common thing a lot of people might be able to relate to. When you're a freshman, you've been in school for two weeks and you're going through recruitment, you have this whole idea in your head of what the sorority is like, what the girls are like, where you would fit in so well and you know that it's just like right for you and then you get cut and then you're like, what the hell? How did they not want me? Like, I'm so perfect for them. And the next year when you're going through it on the other side and you see what actually goes into it and you actually get to know the people more and know the other chapters and you're like, oh, I didn't know so well to begin with. Like, now I understand more why this didn't work out for me because there was something better that I just didn't even know about. Try not to put yourself in the mindset, even subconsciously, you don't know what's best for them. Yeah and you don't know what's around the corner. So it's definitely been a learning experience for me the last couple months. Yes, I am super, super lucky in the sense that like I've had YouTube and social media to support me and I'm able to like pay my rent, live my life, but not everyone has that luxury. So I do want to thank you guys for supporting me and giving me thumbs up to share my videos with other people because that makes it easier for them to find them. That's mostly what I wanted to talk about in this video, just explaining my new job for the next few months. So yes, it is only temporary, but you never know what doors could open from that. I'm starting to do like the paperwork, uh, finalizing everything. Part of me is like, you should wait to post this until you actually start in case like something comes up and it doesn't work out. Keep your doors open to any sort of opportunity that comes your way and don't count something out just because it doesn't fit what in, in your head of the perfect mold of the perfect job. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this life update video. Let me know what kind of videos you want me to make when I start working. It'll be such a cool opportunity. So it's not a government agency. I don't need like a security clearance to work there. It's not super, super strict and secretive like the government was when I was working there. So I really couldn't share like anything with you when I was working at the State Department. But international organizations are a lot more open and obviously like I'm gonna learn what I can and cannot say before I say anything but follow me on Instagram to see all my updates before then as I'm filming this I'm going back to DC this weekend so that vlog will be up this week and then it'll be my last week of freedom before starting my job subscribe definitely if you've made it to this point and you're not already or if you've just been like watching my videos on and off and you're not subscribed like girl boy other please join <laughs> Hit the bell if you want to get notified when I upload because I don't even know when I'm going to be uploading. I'm still going to figure out like my whole schedule and how things are going to go. I'm just so excited to have a schedule and places to be and an opportunity to learn and get experience at UNICEF. I'm so grateful and just I feel really lucky and blessed and I'm looking forward to all that is to come. Thank you all so much for supporting me and going on this journey with me and I will see you very soon for my next vlog prepping for my new job! <laughs>